start recording. Oh, there we go. And I'll spotlight and let everyone in. I actually muted you, Jeff. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you Hello, again everyone. for joining us. This is actually going to be this is going to be a pretty fun class, and uh, um, we're going to be making a mess just as much as we're going to be constructing a painting and. Um, hopefully, a controlled mess adds to the painting and uh, makes it uh, more dynamic. Um, so maybe you've heard of this idea of deconstruction. So that's being willing to take what you have on the paint that's on the canvas, scrape off, smear together, destroy um, what you already have, and then build on top of that. And if you've taken the classes, you've heard me talk about make the mess and then start editing uh, or cl start cleaning up the mess. And it's kind of along those lines, but if you uh, watch that video on YouTube um, that we got posted today, um, I got about halfway through that painting and then I scraped it all off. So now I have this underlying layer of um, color really kind of an outline of, of the painting, but uh, an underlying, of, um, underlying color. And then I rebuilt it. And you can see it go through stages in the painting. And um, this helps us get past, because we can um, start painting and then we get in our tires in the rut and we just stay in that rut until the painting's done and we're not happy with it. So the idea is kind of, we get our tires in the rut, we get out of there. And we just re, um, uh, start reworking the painting. And you'll see how th this can really benefit us as an artist. So we're gonna be painting flowers. And um, when I paint flowers, you may have heard me talk about this before, but uh, flowers are, um, there's something different than just flowers. So that gives me a, a you know, underlying not motive, but underlying inspiration for what I'm going to paint. So when you think about uh, flowers, I see rockets, I see ballerinas, um, I see uh, fireworks. Sometimes I see when I make a painting, all of those things go into the painting. Um, and uh, it's just color and movement all over the painting. And that's the that's what kind of creates the um, something that's more than just a flower painting. Now there's there's just some joy and vibrancy in the painting. All right, so I'm just going to draw a couple of things on my um, paper here. So what do I mean by rocket? So if we think of uh, cone flowers. We have some that look like this. There's our rocket. So we have them going off in every direction and it kind of leans towards um, the fireworks. So we can have the firework explosion. So we have rockets, we have firework explosion. But now, are you starting to see the ballet? If you look, imagine a ballerina taking a bow. So, uh, She's bending forward. This is the top of her head. Here's her hands out here. And so when I'm painting um, cone flowers, um, especially, I'm either thinking of rockets or uh, 
ballerinas. This you saw in the video, and basically, it, we even have a YouTube video on this, the power of the red dot. So um, I'm always trying to, well, break down flowers into its simplest form, and there you have it right there. You can almost do any shape. Put a little center button in there and you have a flower. If you have a, a pencil in front of you, try it. Um, you can. Throw in a couple extra grasses and there you go these are red they make perfect poppies so there that's the basic shape that's the the basic idea so um, we're not thinking about them as flowers but we're just thinking of them as um uh circles with dots we're thinking of them as rockets explosions of fireworks or even ballerinas so um, maybe there's something that you think of. If you ever watch a, a ballet with multiple dancers, um, you will see this, this uh, organized, synchronized dance going across the stage. And that's how I, what I'm thinking about when I'm painting the flowers is trying to create some organization out of this chaos. And uh, again, we'll, we'll start seeing this as we start painting. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. Let's get into painting. So I'm going to squirt out my colors. And I'm also going to go off camera on this one. And um, we'll get started on our canvas over here. And while Jeff's setting up there, um, I'm just going to mention a few things in our classes. If this is your first time, or you probably you've took, taken our classes before you can just doing this out you've probably heard this a couple of times but we um just uh to let you know how we kind of do our classes we just keep everyone uh muted and then uh if you have a question though you can use the chat um the zoom zoom chat feature i'll be watching that monitoring that for any questions you may have and then we also record these classes and post them uh, to YouTube, um, and then we'll send send the link out to everyone so that you can go back, watch it, um, see anything you missed, or if you have, to, you have to cut out early and then you watch it later, follow along again. Um, let's see, when are we doing next, or what are we doing next class? Next class is a uh, hare, a bunny rabbit. So that's next week, next Monday, and then the following is a small stream landscape. So if you go on the website, you can kind of see some of the some of the following ones and sign up for those also if you wanted to. But let's see here. Chapter questions, reminders. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's just a few reminders just to get everyone up to speed. Tripod got in the way, kicked it. Sorry about that. No problem. If you uh, find my other video camera, um, the one that I was just speaking on, you'll see a field of flowers, a field of uh, um, pink echinacea, uh, cone flowers. Do you see the ballerinas? <laughs> um, do you see the rockets, uh, the chaos? Um, really there's only one flower that stands out. Everything else is just dots and dark spots. So it's just suggesting the flowers in the background. This is a real photo, um, but that's what we, what we wanna to try to capture. We're, we're gonna to try to create that chaos in a painting. So you can paint whatever flower you want. You can paint them as circles and this is key um, paint what makes the most sense to you. Um, I'm going to paint the cone flowers 
and um, have a little fun with that. But uh, paint what makes sense to you. So if, if you see flowers as cups, think of uh, poppies, they're gonna be kind of like a bowl. Uh, they may be just as simple as a circle with a dot in the center. Um, do you see them as the rockets or as the, the, the exploding fireworks, the ballerinas? Um, sometimes we're looking down and maybe the, you, you can think of a daisy, you're looking down at the ground, you see the button in the center and then the leaves going out from that. Imagine if you were looking down on a ballerina. Uh, from the ceiling, looking down at the group of ballerinas, uh, you can imagine um, how that would look. It's basically their head in the center and their big tutu uh, flowing out from around them. Same thing with flowers. So now that we, um, we're not thinking of them as flowers anymore, now we can actually start having some fun because we're not worried about them looking perfect. Now we're just more about um, uh, having some energy in the in the painting. So I'm going to throw on some gloves. Can the picture be spotlighted? Yeah, I, I tried doing that, Joanna, but for some reason it won't let me spotlight. I think because Jeff has his video off, but then that defeats the purpose if his video is oh. on because then you can't see the picture. But for so for some reason it won't let me spotlight it. But um, should I put up that one? Here, let me see if I can post it today. Uh, let me try something. Uh oh. What are you going to try? <laughs> I feel like you're going to suddenly disappear, Jeff. You could be right. Oh, <laughs> I think I might have, I might be winning. Uh oh. There we go. All right. Um, Jake, do you want this to you through email? Yeah, whatever is fine. Okay. That's perfect. Is it the, uh, is it the, the photo that we, that we posted on Instagram or is it, uh, this is the photo that I have as a screensaver on my iPad. Oh, okay. All right, let me. Sick. It's uh, Jeff. That one's tiny. What? I I, I uh, short or um, what do you call it? Edit it so it would make it big. No, that screenshot. Uh, it and then... Yeah, let me let me screen share it. Actually, I can I can make it bigger. There we go. It, for some reason, it showed up tiny on mine. Okay. Here you go. Can you see that? It's kind of pixely, but yeah. No, that's good. We want our um, we want if if you're wearing glasses, actually take your glasses off. We want our eyes to not focus in on the detail and kind of look at the picture as a whole. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust the composition a little bit, um, but if you look, there are multiple styles of petals coming out from the flowers. If you look just at the bottom, uh, the one on the right, it's more like a rocket, where the one on the left is more like a ballerina. And so we can have a variety of petals coming out from from that head. Uh, something, if you're gonna paint these flowers, something to think about, notice how dark it is at the top in, that, in the bulb in the, of the flower, in that head. It is dark and then it has bright red hair, right? Um, we have a variety of pinks. It almost goes to a, uh, an off white. We have dark pinks to an off white. So we'll wanna um, utilize that magenta color uh, quite a bit in the painting tonight. And one thing real quick, one of the easiest ways to uh, paint flowers, especially um, these cone flowers, 
is to go in. Start out. There it is right there. So there's a pretty easy flower. Yeah, so start on the outside of the petal and go in. Make sure you have a couple that kind of dance up like that. All right, here's our the first lesson in deconstruction. Just go and scrape it all off too. So that one flower, we're gonna use our rule of thirds here. We're gonna put our main flower right in here. Um, and this is the one that we're gonna spend the most time on. Everything else is going to be background noise. So not important, okay? But we wanna, we wanna trick the, the, the viewer's mind, their eye. So we're gonna kind of just throw in some background noise. So how can we do that? Well, let's create green. So we grab a little bit of uh, blue, a little bit of yellow. So let's add just a little bit of white in there. And so my green looks pretty minty. I'm gonna warm that, that up a little bit. So I'm gonna throw a little Indian yellow in there. There we go. So now I have a nice green. I'll clean off my palette over here. Don't want to waste any of that uh, green paint. So I have a little bit of pink started. I'm gonna actually mix in a little bit of cadmium yellow, a little bit of pink. Now I'm gonna take this and mix it in with my green. Not completely, but just enough. Now here's the reasoning behind what we're going to do. If you look at that picture, if you look right down the center and kind of squint your eyes a little bit, you lose focus of the flowers and you just see kind of a muddy pink green color. So what we're doing, yeah, I got mud also, <laughs> but, uh, what we're going to do is kind of use that to our advantage. So we're just going to throw this color in our painting. Notice I'm not covering up all of the areas. As, as multiple colors move away from us, as they go off in the distance, they start blending together. So uh, um, maybe you can imagine a field of flowers, that you, the flowers that are up close, you can make out all the details, but then as it goes further in the distance, the color of the flower and the grasses start blending together. And that actually creates, or in our mind, um, creates that distance. So what we're trying to do is duplicate that. 
what is it? I'm, I'm leaving some paint in there. So just like I left some pink in there, I'm gonna go back and same thing, leave a little green in there. And of course, one of the other things that this is accomplishing is just covering our, our canvas, uh, getting rid of um, all that white canvas. All right, so there's our, our background noise. And I just said that as colors go away from us, as they go further away, they blend together. Well, when they start coming towards us or down the canvas, they're gonna become more, um, they're gonna become more in focus, more, we'll see more of the details. So what does that mean? That's, uh, we're gonna, just kind of throw in some suggested grasses. And uh, I am not painting thick oil right now. So I'm scraping the canvas with my color. You know, it's really cool. Next time you go to an art gallery or a museum and you see a field painting, notice that this is the trick that the artist used. So uh, I, wanna, I want some variety in my green. So I'm gonna add a little more Indian yellow. Oh, uh, Whitney's wondering, what was the color composition again? Oh. So um, my pink is uh, magenta and cadmium red light, but you can take any color. I just, I'm using the primaries plus Indian yellow and cadmium red light. So you can just take um, a magenta, a pink color, uh, even, the, even a, you know, uh, like a lizard and crimson will lean towards pink, uh, purples, any color you want. So I'm gonna add it a little more Indian yellow and white to my flower, or to my green, I should say. And I'm just gonna keep creating noise back here. And what I mean by noise is mess. <laughs> So if you have a, if you can abstract your mind, you can probably already start to see our field of flowers coming about um, on our canvas. And again, we're, we're just, we're, we're making a mess. Um, that idea of uh, deconstructing, this is the, this is along the, or this goes along with our mess. So I've made some more red color, red and uh, magenta. I'm gonna go up here and just as as much as I add, I'm also scraping off and reapplying. Can you get a sec, Jeff? Uh, would you be able to turn the camera just a tad bit to the right? Or you just rotate it just a tad bit to the right? That makes sense. How's that? Or, 
Beautiful. Just kind of throw some red in here. Remember that power of suggestion. Um, suggesting things gets the viewer uh, more involved with your painting. So if you painted a perfect field of flowers, everything is realistic. The viewer is gonna look at it and admire it and say, what a beautiful painting of flowers. But if we suggest, now we get their brain uh, moving a little bit. We get it working and they get more involved. And so they start even trying to imagine the day. They try to uh, imagine maybe um, a time where they've seen a field of flowers like this. Uh, maybe we can even get them to subconsciously think of ballerinas or uh, fireworks. But that idea of suggestion um, I keep this note in my, in my studio, the power of suggestion is greater than the statement of reality. And uh, Ernest Hemingway, we'll, we'll uh, cycle back around to Ernest Hemingway, recycle Ernest Hemingway. Um, he taught us that we can tell powerful um, stories, we can make powerful paintings with very simple ideas. If you have not heard um, about Ernest Hemingway, let me know. But even with what we have right here, Anybody who looked at that, um, their imagination gets started and they can see a field of flowers. So as long as we're mixing colors here, grab some of your dark blue, your cyan blue and cadmium red light Mix them together, we'll get a nice dark, almost black brown. And that's gonna be perfect for the heads of our flowers. So uh, I just took some of that dark, um, our dark uh, brown color and threw in some dots. And you can see if, right now, we could almost see them as poppies, right? So in just the simplest form, we're already suggesting um, those uh, round poppies. And so at this point, we could actually go in either direction. We could do poppies or we could do uh, the cone flowers. But I'm going to kind of break this down a little bit, scrape it off. Let's throw some.
We're going to deconstruct. <laughs> We're going to destroy before we move forward. All right, so I'm going to, I want to create a, a dark color at the bottom. And, and that dark color is going to be the, the earth. So it's going to kind of, um, the dark color is going to be kind of an anchor to the painting. Um, it, it's going to, um, it's going to create a base or a foundation for making, um, for all the other colors for one thing, but it's going to be kind of this anchor that is going to set the whole painting. So I'm going to take my dark and I'll probably have to make some more here. But I'm just going to go and fill in the bottom. Another thing that I'm trying to do with, with this process, just like that picture we just looked at, it, yes, it is a field of beautiful flowers, but it's, there's a lot of chaos there. And so this way, this style of painting allows for me to kind of um, suggest that chaos. So we are gonna have some, some beautiful flowers in here, but in the meantime, um, we're gonna create that, that background noise that's gonna support, it's gonna kind of be the, again, part of that anchor for those few flowers that we're gonna give attention to or that, that we're gonna give some uh, detail to. So I used up all of my, my mud, my dark mud on my canvas. I, so I just have this little thin layer of mud still on my palette. So I took, grabbed some blue and I grabbed some cadmium yellow light, mixed them together. Now I have a nice dark green. I just mixed them right over the top of that, that mud. So now I'm gonna come in here and just kind of move these colors around a little bit. Pushing my, my paint, not only into my lighter colors and my everything that I got going on up here, but also down in here um, with my mud. Um, you might even, what's kind of cool, like this mark right here, you barely see it. You might not even be able to see it on over the camera. But once we get done with the painting, this little mark, is going to contribute to the whole painting because it's gonna just break up very subconsciously this line of dark that's going across the bottom. So we're just gonna keep mixing those colors together. We're, we're um, getting a, a variety of shades just by mixing these darts together.
So I haven't looked at the picture in a while, but it seems like there's kind of a, a valley. So the flowers are on this side and the flowers are on this side. So what I'm gonna do is kind of push this darker green up here and I'm gonna do it over there, but I'm not gonna make them equal. Um, you know, so this side I'm gonna have, I think I, since my main flower is gonna be right here, I'm gonna build up the green a little bit higher over here. And then I'll just keep this a little bit lower, a little bit higher than the center, obviously, but um, lower than what's going on over here. So I've, I'm taking all this time to cover up all of that white canvas. We could have created a shortcut in the very beginning by covering the whole canvas with a, a nice warm yellow color or, or a warm orange color. Um, sometimes I'll use acrylic uh, paint, just paint the whole surface of the canvas one color. Now, when I go to start painting, instead of me trying to um, cover over all the white canvas, now I'm, I'm purpose purposely letting the warm color that's in the background poke through. So uh, it, it's a little trick, just uh, and it helps create a, a, a harmony in the painting because everywhere in the painting has this warm color um, kind of um, lighting up the grasses. You can almost imagine the sun um, coming through and, and, and working its way through and that the color of that yellow sun is just warming up um, any areas that can sneak through the blades. So what I'm, I'm going to go back to my lighter green that I had and finish this out. Just dragging down it with my palette knife, just suggesting grasses. So as you're painting, um, keep in the back of your mind contrast. How can I create contrast? And so, um, this is just a medium uh, shade of green here, maybe leaning towards the lighter side, but this is very dark all around here. And so I'm already creating um, a, a strong contrast. So eventually I'm gonna go to something like this. And that eventually is just now. <laughs> so I've got, if you think of color um, from light to dark, um, let's say one is the lightest and 10 is the darkest. Uh, it's not natural for us to go to the one or go to the 10. So what we do, because we're squeezing the already made color out of the tube, we stick in the four to six area. And so we get very little 
contrast. Nothing really stands out. And you, I'm going to tell you, you can already guess what I'm going to say. It's boring. So we start creating some contrast. We start pushing our, our colors out to off white, not pure white, but off white. We start pushing our colors to the darkest, not um, pure black, but almost it looks black to the eye. If we can get ourselves to kind of push ourselves that far, go against our natural tendency, we're going to be super happy with our paintings. All right, I'm going to take some magenta. I'm going to take my light green and I'm going to mix them together. I actually get not a mud, but kind of a, a dusty rose color. Now I'm going to come back here. I'm just going to pull down in, in uh, areas. Break it up with, so I'll pull down, but then break it up a little bit. What's really cool is no matter what we have going on right here, once we put in the detail of the, our, our main flower, the brain gets tricked and immediately it starts assuming that this is just more of the same flower. I saw a painting, um, it was, let's say 40 ducks walking down a hill into the water and it was realistic it was a realistic painting and the artist said the only, there's only one duck in that painting that's realistic all of the other ones are just suggested and once you saw that your mind was blown because um you saw the detail of the one duck everything else was just suggested but your brain makes it become real. Your brain now accepts that those are realistic ducks also. So that's kind of what we're, what we're trying to do is um, trick the brain. And every one of us is gonna get, if we're using brushes, if we're using palette knives, we all have different size brushes, we all have different size palette knives. And that's a great thing because now we're going to get different flowers. We're going to get different paintings. And um, so that tells us that there's nothing that's bad and there's nothing that's, um, well, I shouldn't say there's nothing that's good. We're all just going to have it. It's all going to be unique. I should say that that's a better way of putting it. Um, so just kind of experimenting with different size palette knives, different size brushes. You start to learn what you like, what you don't like, how you use that palette knife, what you, how you can get the best effect from it. So it's just uh, experimenting and observing. And as you observe, you start realizing what you like and you start um, using that more. All right, so we're gonna, let's uh, um, fill in our sky. And what I'm gonna do, is um, that's probably gonna need more blue. And they take quite a bit of blue. I might grab a little bit of my pink here, but a little bit of my green. Uh, 
that blue and that light green, we're actually gonna get a nice turquoise color out of it. So I want a nice warm, very light colored sky in the background. So I got dark down here. Well, up here, I'm gonna push myself to a very um, off-white warm blue. So kind of a turquoise blue. All right, let's see what happens when we mix these together. First of all, I learned that I probably didn't need as much blue as I added, but that's okay. So um, what we can do with this darker blue, just to get rid of some of it, is go right across the top. And the reason why, if you go out next time, if, if the sun ever comes out and we have a blue sky again, I know most of us have given up hope if you're living here in the Midwest, but um, notice, so go out into a field, look across to the horizon. You'll notice that along the horizon, the sky is just barely, um, it's, it's basically off white. It's a very, very, very subtle light blue. But as you now start looking up right above you, that's where you get this dark blue. That's that blue sky that we see. So how, how, do, we, how do we take that and translate that into a painting? Well, we add a darker blue up here. And we just slowly make a, a gradation down till it's a very light blue. So what's funny is when I first started painting, I used to do the opposite. It was dark down here. And as you went up, it was light. And uh, someone said, have you ever looked in the sky, Jeff? <laughs> so uh, when I actually went and observed, I realized, yes, that's, that's how it is. So that, that vibrant blue is, is right above us. But as we go down towards the horizon line, um, it turns into an off-white. There we go. I'm just gonna go up here, throw my light blue on there. I'll get plenty on. And right at this point, it's not touching any of the other colors there yet. So now I'm just going to start scraping away with my palette knife, just like I was doing down here. I'm not going to clean off my palette knife as I do this. Maybe once I get down into the flowers, um, I might clean it off a little bit more often. But uh, so I'm going to start off with the, the, the light blue into the dark blue. But then when we get down here, well, let's, we'll talk about that when we get there. All right, so now I'm just gonna keep scraping like this, kind of going up and down a little, a little bit. You see what's happening? Starting to get that fade.
kind of fun. And again, observe. Notice how you, as you're, you're using your palette knife or your brush and you're kind of blending those two colors together, notice the, the control. So maybe you'll wanna um, uh, go a little bit higher into the dark blue a little bit. Notice the control because um, it will start affecting it, but it won't necessarily change it over immediately. And that kind of control is gonna help you um, in your paintings because it's, uh, it's so easy to just keep adding paint and pretty soon you just have mud on your canvas. But uh, if you can learn that control, just um, subtle little uh, uh, strokes, blending the colors together. Now you can get some beautiful, even realistic um, looking paintings. All right, how's everybody doing? Are you keeping up? All right, thank you, Lena. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Excellent, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Perfect. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Okay, so again, as things go away from us, the colors start to blend. Well, that's true with the, when the landscape hits the sky. Um, the shade of the sky will start to influence the color of the earth. And a real quick example of that is, what color are mountains that are way off in the distance? They're blue. And so the atmosphere has taken over, has blended those two colors together. And now we're getting uh, the idea of a, a shade of blue for a mountain. So same is true with the flowers that we're gonna do. We're gonna do the exact same process. So we're gonna come up here and actually maybe I'll grab a bunch. And just come down here and work it in. Okay, so right away after I did that, I cleaned off my palette knife. So now I can come up here and have some control and I'm just gonna start blending these slowly together. If I go down into the flowers a little bit, it's going to suggest the, the little dip in the in my in my my basket of in the field here. All right, so I, I'm not gonna do any editing yet uh, or any cleanup, but are you already in my painting kind of feeling that suggestion that the field is going off into the distance? So that's, that's again, we're, we're, we're gonna have our main flowers up here. They're gonna be in detail. Everything else is gonna go into the distance. It's gonna go off into this horizon line here. And the colors eventually all become one, it becomes mud. Or, um, it, it just, yeah, just a, a non-distinct color because every color at that point has blended together. So now I'm gonna come back and clean it up. So I'm gonna grab some more clean paint up here and just kind of, Create some depth. Notice this spot right here kind of created a little lull in the little drop there in flowers. 
we keep coming back and suggesting that same thing. How's there, hey, is anybody getting any really cool effects? This is one of my favorite parts of painting is uh, just seeing how that, how all these colors kind of intermix with each other and create um, different effects. Now I'm cleaning off my palette knife. Um, repeatedly and that's on purpose just to make sure I'm, I'm bringing down that clean color. All right, so just to kind of review what we've learned so far, um, our dark down here is kind of our anchor. And now this is where our starting point and everything else is gonna be anchored to this dark at the bottom. So as it starts going up and further away from us, um, now we're starting to create where the sunlight is hitting areas. And so we have, uh, uh, a change in color from dark going up to light. And here the, the light is um, making some strong points in the grasses. Beyond that is our red and green or magenta and green mixed together. And it's just that um, a trick that we're using to suggest that it's away from us. So now the colors have kind of blended in together. Same is true with our sky. Uh, it's coming down and it's slowly blending into our um, flowers. So what we did is we just used a trick to suggest some depth in our painting. It, hopefully that's making sense. Is there any questions with that? And notice that we're all, we're making the colors connect. We want the colors to all um, like little stepping stones connect together to get to the next one. So it's just small gradations in the color to get to the next one. You can use this the same method um, over and over again. Just choose a new flower, um, keep painting the same flowers. You can use this for making poppies. You can use it for making um, irises. Uh, you can use it for the, the cone flowers, obviously, daisies. And so this one simple process has unlimited um, variety to it. And it, became, it can become our, our little trick in our back pocket to making great paintings.
So that idea of uh, thinking about flowers as um, giving them a character, whether it's you know the ballerinas or rockets, now we're kind of abstracting in our mind what they are. And this is gonna help us create um, our own unique flowers. We're gonna get maybe even give some personality to our flowers. Um, I've thought of uh, flowers as um, they can be depressing, you know, kind of feel this somber mood to them. Uh, they can be very joyful. Uh, they can look like uh, people standing in a crowd. But if you have that kind of uh, thought in the back of your mind, now you're going to kind of mix them up a little bit. Instead of that um, sterile idea of what a flower should look like. Now, what do I mean by that? So um, let's just take There you kind of just get an X. I'm going to grab a little, maybe put a little. Little dip in there. Set that the color, the paint that's on my palette knife. I just put it back up on the palette. Might have a little bit of color in there, but I'll I'll use it for mud somewhere else. Um, and it looks like I have to make some more mud dark color. So that's not the traditional looking flower. But I put that little head on there and it becomes um, a flower. So I'm going to get rid of that guy. I'm going to just take this and throw that color around. So I did the same process that I did earlier with my muddy green pink color. Just kind of went in there with a cleaner um, pink and threw in some, some suggestions of flowers back here, but then broke them up. And again, if you're abstracting your mind a little bit, you start to see them as flowers. So um, if you're struggling with your palette knife, just a reminder, hang on to your palette knife with the tips of your fingers. If you're using a paintbrush, that's another great suggestion. Just hang on to it with the tips of your fingers. It allows that, um, if you're holding on to it like a knife, now you're gonna use it like a knife. If you hold on to it delicately, delicately with the tips of your fingers, it's just gonna be an extension of your finger. Um, you're also, if you're hanging onto it with a knife, you're also gonna drag your knuckles through your painting. So you have great maneuverability um, with the tips of your fingers. And also notice that I'm painting very loosely, um, very freely. That I, I'm not trying to create anything real yet. And if you can kind of um, paint in that manner, that, that expressive manner, 
you're going to be really happy with your paintings. Because remember, we're just trying to suggest the power of suggestion. Did anybody not hear about Ernest Hemingway? Give me a thumbs down if you have not heard about Ernest Hemingway. It looks like everybody's been taking the classes. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so Ernest Hemingway um, told an amazing story with only six words. We're trying to tell an amazing, or make an amazing painting by using um, simple strokes of the brush and palette knife. So we can uh, go back in. I'm going to create a lighter green and add a little bit more Indian yellow. And go in here and just make some thin suggestions of grasses. If you are uh, looking to um, sell your paintings, master this technique. Um, if you're missing some things, go back and make sure you watch it on YouTube. Master this technique and you will sell paintings. And what's really fun is we're all gonna create them differently. No matter how hard we try, we're not gonna create the same paintings. Um, every time I make a painting like this, it's always different. And so it's just such a fun, a great way to paint and people love it. Um, people respond really well with, uh, uh, with this style of painting. They like being fooled, they like being tricked. Like, Maybe you've done it, you've been in a, in a museum or an art gallery, you see a, a painting and you look, you walk up close and you look at how they did something and you think, oh, look at that. 
they weren't in there with tiny little brushes. They just quickly did a, a, a brush stroke and left it. And now we get fooled into thinking that it is whatever they intended it to be. So I'm gonna create a, a variety of pinks here. Um, I'm gonna add just white to my pink. I'm gonna add a little um, cadmium red light to my magenta, I shouldn't say magenta. But in the back of my mind, I keep thinking pink because the echinacea are pink. Maybe throw a little bit of white in there. A little more pink. There we go. Remember we observed in those flowers that there's a variety of, of shades of pink. Um, maybe I'll take some of my sky color and mix it in with my, um, one of my pinks, there we go. Let's just mix it. Ooh, getting a, a lavender shade down here. I'm mixing it with that dark blue that I made originally. That's probably a little too blue, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more pink or magenta. There we go. So I have right now, I have one, two, three, four varieties of, of uh, pink for my flowers, but I'm gonna add a little white to some of them. I'm gonna add just maybe a little bit of, uh, maybe a little more cadmium red light, maybe sometimes a little more um, just magenta just to keep creating variety. So it'd be easy just to create one pink, go in there and make my petals. But realistically, that's gonna, it's gonna be boring. We want it more multidimensional. And just like we uh, started out dark and went light, same thing with our flowers. We're gonna start out with our darkest color um, my, uh, my uh, purple lavender down here, and then we'll build on top of that. So I'll probably start out with um, this purple lavender, go to my um, mixture of cadmium red light and magenta, and then maybe um, I'll probably go to this dusty color here, um, third, and maybe a lighter shade of my um, off or my pink, pink and white shade over here. All right, so this is, if you can see, um, I'll give you a size comparison with my finger. So it's about an inch and a half, kind of a pear shaped, diamond shaped here. And I've been using this exact same palette knife uh, for the whole painting, but I could have used any palette knife and just all of these effects would be different. I'm gonna keep, going with this palette knife, but sometimes I may switch over to a smaller or bigger or round uh, palette knife just to keep creating variety. So if you get a chance, if you have other um, palette knives, make sure you experiment with them. All right, so I'm gonna just start out with my, my main flower here. So I'm gonna, I'm 
again, start out um, at the edge and work my way in. Kind of have to be a contortionist a little bit to get this to work. So I can throw this color in a few other spots. I'm going right over my old marks. Um, and again, this is, this is just suggestion back here. So um, I'm just gonna throw some of this purple in, in, ver in a, a variety of areas. I'm gonna make a secondary flower right here. Since this is my main flower, I'm actually gonna put two um, secondary flowers over here to kind of counterbalance that. So All right, so remember I said our colors are kind of like um, stepping stones, just like in that real, in the original painting, those colors just um, slowly shift from one color to the next. So what I'm gonna do is just grab a little bit of my um, cadmium red light and magenta mixture and mix it in with my purple. And what I'm hoping to get is something in between my purple and that shade. So now I can come back. So look at all that variety, all that texture in the painting. And it's not texture from the thickness of the paint, it's texture that comes from the, the similar, but variety of colors. So last week we did the horse and I said this week we'll do kind of an easier subject. Um, it is an easier subject. It's a lot easier, funner to paint, but I'm, I'm pushing you a little bit with the color. And um, that pushing is to get you more comfortable with using a variety of shades of, of paint. So we might be working with a, 
a magenta pink color, but we want to have a variety in there. We actually have, if you think about the variety we have, we have, um, we have purple, we have mud up here. We have some other shades of mud. Now we have a, a, a red purple color that we've introduced. So now we've got, as far as that magenta, we have manipulated it into maybe six or seven different shades. And we're gonna keep going um, because variety is the spice of life. I've heard that somewhere before. Any questions at this point? Is it making sense? Remember, there's no dumb questions. There's only bad teaching. So I'm gonna, my third color, I'm gonna push it just a little bit lighter. Now I have, I don't know if you can see that, but just a, a very, um, very light pink, almost, almost leaning towards a dusty rose color. But what it is, is my cadmium red light, my magenta and mixed with white. So how are we getting that dusty rose color? Well, there's an orange or yellow in our cadmium red light and it's mixing with our reds. So now it's pushing it towards the orange shades and we're getting from it a dusty rose color.
Oops. So I'm just contributing to that background noise by throwing in just some more definite shades of, of color. Oops, sorry, Lena, I, I missed your uh, comment from just a few minutes ago. Uh, Lena wants to show her uh, painting to you here, Jeff. I know why she wants to show it. She just wants to make me to feel bad about my painting. Yep, <clears throat> she's going to uh -huh. take your job. She always paints a better painting. <laughs> All right, Lena, let's see it. Oh man, look at that. I knew it. Look at the fireworks. Isn't that cool? Yep. Nice job, Lena. Nice. Yep. <clears throat> Lena's teaching the class next week, Jeff. Exactly. Good. I'm I'm going on vacation. <laughs> If anyone else wants to show their paintings, let us uh, let us know. We can do that. <clears throat> if you want to get a, just show it to Jeff just for fun, or or get some tips on if it's not turning out quite the way you want it, you can just let us know.
So I'm going back to my dark black brown color and just throwing in some heads. And up here, I'm just, just using the tip of my palette knife. And uh, in the background, I'm just randomly throwing in little dots. But as I come down, they start having more purpose in where I put them. So now um, I, have, I have pretty much have my main flower done, but now I'm still trying to create that background noise. So I'm gonna push it, push my colors even further. So I've been adding in just a very soft pink, pink color. Well, now I'm gonna do the same with the green. I'm gonna come in here and just put in little dabs of green.
All right. Take care, Lena. Thanks for joining. See you next week. Bye, Lena. Real quick, um, if anyone isn't subscribed to our YouTube channel, that's uh, if you want to to do that. Um, yeah, we we would appreciate it. I mean, but that's the way you could be notified when we upload a class. But also, we have a few um, videos that we're working on that'll be pretty neat. Also, that we're going to be posting relatively soon. So. Those are a couple things to look out for. So um, I'm not painting anything. I'm actually literally just putting little dots of color. And again, it, it goes back to that idea of suggesting things. So um, uh, I can do almost anything in the background and it's going to be believable as flowers. So I've just been, maybe I can uh, push my camera up a little bit to see if you can see this. And the idea is, is really letting go of that idea of perfection or realis, realism. 
and applying color so that there's a balance. Now, what does that mean? Um, uh, just like I talked about having a balance with my main flower right here, I put two of them over here. I had this come up a little bit higher. Um, this is kind of a trough here, dropping down and again, coming up over there. So it's all this balance, this push and pull of, of color and uh, movement. Um, that's why we can get away with just about anything in that background. It's just applying color. So repeating the colors, I'll try this color. Yeah, let's make it a little pinker. In a sec, uh, looks like Ada and Leslie want to show their, uh, let's see here, they did African violets. What? That's yeah. crazy. Flowers. They want to show where, them. Where are they? Let's see. Ada, you're not, what? I Get out of town. Those Data, awesome. I am I'm speechless. That is beautiful. And do you know sure. what? Oh, nice, Leslie. <laughs> All right, keep keep them up for a sec. Keep them up for a sec. I want to, so everyone else can All see right, so these. Use your imagination. Um, let's look at Ada's first. Can you picture the looking down on the top of ballerinas? Hmm. So if you're, you're up in the ceiling, you're looking down and imagine those ballerinas spinning around. That's cool. So cool. Yeah, look at that. And then um, Leslie, beautiful fireworks. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. Thumbs up, Ada. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let me ask you guys, Ada and Leslie, did it help thinking about them in it, kind of giving them a little character rather than just being flowers? Hopefully, maybe a little, maybe a little bit of influence. <laughs> Nice job. All right, so um, again, we'll just kind of review what we've uh, learned tonight. Um, we wanna push the contrast, that light and dark. We have some nice clean colors and we have some muddy colors. So there's some contrast. We have a big main flower and we have a bunch of background noise. Another nice contrast. Um, we have, uh, let's see here. Light, dark, clean colors, muddy colors, big, small, um, really any kind of contrast that you can come up with is gonna make the painting better. We have complements. We have our magenta and green. So um, we have a nice complement that way. 
And what did we use? We used those three primaries. We got magenta, blue, and yellow that created our greens. So we just kind of kept recycling those colors a little bit. We got a nice harmonious painting from just using those three. We have a, a variety or a contrast because we, we didn't line up our flowers all in a row. We kind of have them going up and down. We have our, our uh, landscape kind of dropping down here in the center. We got, even though this is in the center, now we have our flowers kind of pulling away from that. Kind of that push and pull. You, we, wanna, we want movement um, in the painting. We don't want everything lined up. Again, that's going to make it boring. So it's going to create static in the painting. So we keep trying to uh, put in variety, whether it's contrasts, shapes, uh, movements, sizes, um, the composition, colors, all of that variety is going to make a more dynamic painting. And again, our natural inclination is to stay in the safety zone. And so we paint the painting and we think, oh, what? Why can't I get it to, to really stand out? Why can't I get it to really pop? It's because we're staying in that safety zone. So if we can get out of the comfort zone, push ourselves to darkers and lighters and the contrast, the, the clean colors, the mud, embrace the mud. Our mud is our best friend. Um, it's it's going to just open up all kinds of doors, making painting enjoyable. You're going to you're going to start discovering that for every door you open up, there's going to be ten more available, and that's what makes painting fascinating. It's a never-ending pursuit. You'll always find something new, even though if we all painted the same flowers tonight. Um, we got a variety of styles, we got a variety of uh, flowers, colors, and um, nobody has a monopoly on painting flowers. This is just a nice way, a fun way of doing it um, that has endless possibilities. All right, I'm gonna really go out and make myself uncomfortable. I'm mixing my green. Oh, it picked up a little bit of pink, but that's okay. Mixing it into my white, I'm creating an off-white um, color. I'm gonna experiment with some clouds. Let's just see if uh, I ruin the painting. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of not too shabby. I don't want to put too many in there. Maybe something right up here. My eye keeps going up there. So I'm just going to put something real light in there. Oh, yeah. In a sec, uh, uh, Sarah wants to show her, Sarah Wolves wants to show her uh, poppies. Cool. All right. There's Sarah. Oh, beautiful, Sarah. I love, oh, what happened? Oh, can you see her now? Uh, not, she's not, um, yes, I can. Sarah, I'm definitely seeing your style come out. It's like uh, you're definitely honing in on, on a unique style that's just you. 
I love it. Yeah. Very cool. So uh, just a cool little trick. So I mix green in with my white. Um, there's a little bit of pink in there, which was okay. But uh, look at how it made the clouds stand out. Because is it wouldn't we naturally want to just take some white and and go across there? It would have it would have uh, kind of killed the painting. Um, but what I did is I took some I took the colors that are in here and recycled it up here, and now um, I created a nice harmony in the painting. Aubrey, yes, I would love to see yours, but do you know why I put green in my white for my clouds? Because nobody says that I can't, right? I get to do whatever I want. Nobody can stop me. All right, let's see your painting. <laughs> Aubrey. Huh, mine doesn't go to spotlight for some reason, Jake. It doesn't really. Try, uh, try switching to speaker view, maybe. Let's try that. Switch to speaker view. Nope. What? Remove pen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, do that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Aubrey, <laughs> that is fantastic. And with, okay, so this is what's cool, Aubrey. Um, yours looks completely different from mine, right? Which is awesome. You have a, your own unique style of painting um, these flowers. And so if you kept painting these, you're gonna see um, a lot of cool things uh, as far as how your style starts coming from it. Just like we talked about Sarah's, um, she, she's creating her own unique style, your own unique style will come out of it also. So if you, if you found this way of painting easy, keep painting this, because you've you got a great start. That is fantastic what you painted there. Awesome. Oh, let's see here. Oh, Kathy. Let's see here. I, yeah, look at that, Kathy. Beautiful That's contrast. Cool. And you know what? And, and again, going back to that idea of, of uh, suggestion, I think your painting is so powerful because of how you kept everything simple. Yeah, really, it really is, um, comes across as a striking painting. It's just very striking. Is that Barb or Diane? Oh, hi, Barb. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, so oh, completely different, but I love um, that style that you've created there. Look at, I mean, talk about um, rockets launching off. You feel the movement in that painting. That's SpaceX right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, do uh, you know what I'm saying? It, it, uh, yeah. Again, you got a, a unique style from everybody else and you really made that painting work. Here's another. Oh, cool. This is Diane. Beautiful. So, um, oh, hang on a second. I got to think of the artist. Oh, David Hockney. I think I'm saying his name right. David Hockney. 
if you get a chance, almost even a little bit of, uh, oh, I'm not gonna remember his name. Um, yeah, check out David Hockney and his paintings. You will, you'll be inspired because it, yours is um, at, his, at his level. Super cool. Uh, and and uh, Diane, that painting that you just created um, easily could be in a gallery and, and sell. I should have said that about everybody's, but uh, if I say it about everybody's, then it's going to seem like I'm just making it up. Really, your paintings, everybody's paintings have just been really unique and striking and very well done. And that's what sells a painting. It isn't necessarily the, the, the talent of the artist. It's using the tricks that make that painting stand out and make it unique, make it striking. Yes, Kathy, where are you? Uh, oh, there you are. Oh, hold it back just a little bit. It looks really dark. Oh, man. Yeah, it's just the lighting. What if you go, what if you go further back in the room? Because I have a feeling those colors are... Oh, man. It's The only thing is just the backlight. That's just the yep, only... I think it's... Uh, You so see Kathy, there. this from the colors that I can see that are coming through, um, they it's like going into a bakery, and they have all those variety of frostings, and you, you want to eat every one of them. So when I see your painting, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, uh, light makes a huge difference. <laughs> If you can, if you go uh, get a light bulb um, that makes natural light, and it'll it'll describe it, nature's light, natural light, that type of thing. And uh, now you'll be able to see the, and we'll be able to see the colors um, accurately. Yeah, I th I think mainly the reason we couldn't see it too well, it, it looks like there's just a, a light coming from the back. And so I, I think that's the main issue. Sometimes if you the cameras try to auto adjust and then they underexpose some things. And so like a, a light coming from where the camera's coming from would be the best. I don't I don't know if that's the issue or not, but it seems to be. But yeah. Yep, call that that one. That one, the name is the bakery. Sold. <laughs> Sold. Yeah. Ba oh, no, you should call it uh, the bakery. Yeah, yeah, the bakery. Oh, oh, Joanna, yes. Unique style, fantastic. Wait, let me see. Uh, just on contract, oh, it's Maya. <laughs> Maya or Maya? Maya, Maya, the Let's Maya, see. Maya. Okay, so okay. just the, the strong contrast, fabulous. It goes off into the distance um, and the color definitely um, 
it, it's almost in shadow back there, which is so brilliant because it makes the, the um, flowers that are in the front stand out. You have incredible depth in that painting. Yeah, that's crazy. It's awesome. Oh, we're gonna, oh, I, I think Joanna's going to show hers now. Yeah. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Joanna, I can, I can actually picture that field. There is a, so we live west of the Twin Cities and there's a park in uh, Victoria. And if you go there at the right time of the year, they have a couple fields that are that thick with flowers. Yeah, very stunning, Joanna. Yeah, so if you're looking at your painting and yes, Anna, we let's see here. Let me find you. Get here. See who wants to show this, Anna. Second. There's Anna. Okay, so Anna, your light too is just a little bit of a challenge to see. So let's see if we can get it bigger here. So we can't get the we can't get the details. That's what's hard about it. Oh, it kind of adjusts there. How's yeah, that? I, yep. Awesome. Uh, more abstracted Wait. but it, it, it's that power of suggestion that makes that thing makes your painting so beautiful oh Here's same another. thing oh, same cool. thing it, it's it's more abstracted but there's no doubt um you make our minds work a little bit with the idea that it's a field of flowers that's it again if you keep doing that um anna you could sell those in a gallery. Everybody's, um, if you ever have yes. questions about uh, getting into a gallery, reach out to us. Someday we'll do a class on it. We have it a yeah. part of the, uh, as part of our course. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, kind of getting, getting past the fear and uh, um, approaching yeah. the gallery. But your pain, keep painting. Um, you have a nice little body of work. Uh, six. Oh, there we go. Look at the fireworks and Becky's. Now that's that's like uh, Jolly Ranchers right there. Yeah. That's not a bakery. <laughs> that's a candy shop right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so Becky, what fantastic movement. So um, can we see hers one more time? Yeah, here we go. All right, so if she would have pointed um, her flower or had her flowers going all in the same direction, um, our eyes would just get pushed right off to the side of the um, canvas, right? It would just go right off to the side. But she is, she mastered that push and pull. So there's nothing that's pulling our eye um, necessarily in one, like a magnet pushing our or pulling our eye to the right or to the left our eye can just go bounce around like a pinball all the way through um that painting going from the bottom up so that's that's the kind of push and pull that we want hmm. um if if our flowers are all going the same direction um it, it, it's actually an irritation to our eye because mentally or subconsciously we want to pull it back in but we can't because all the flowers are pointing us off the side of it. Yeah, Kathy, I can, from what I can see right now, it, again, it's a bakery. Look at all of those. I can picture the the 
Oh, uh, yeah. Cupcakes. And yep. um, what a great thing to connect people to, right? So instead of connecting them to uh, bottle rockets or ballerinas, you're connecting them to um, the idea of, of a bakery, which I try to do. Have you ever walked into a bakery and you see all those colors, you see all that thick frosting, you know it's gonna taste overly sweet and you're not gonna like the actual flavor, but you just wanna eat all of it because the colors and the, and the presentation is so fantastic. So what, that's what you, were, you um, did in your painting. You had these beautiful blend of colors and immediately I thought of uh, a bakery. So you get, you get me going on another level. So one of the things that we're gonna do in an upcoming class so you've been watching me use these same five colors for all of these weeks. Well, I'm gonna mix them up. I'm gonna um, maybe use an ultramarine blue, uh, alizarin crimson, maybe an ochre yellow, maybe a cadmium yellow medium. And of course, we'll always use titanium white, but I'm just gonna, um, you still use the idea of red, blue, yellow, but we're gonna get a completely different feel in our paintings. And so uh, it's, it's, I'm super comfortable with these colors, but just like I'm saying, you know, we gotta get out of that comfort zone. So we're gonna, I'm gonna make up a wild color selection and just see what we can create with it. If you wanna see kind of the idea behind it, check out the Zorn palette. So Google the Zorn palette. Uh, uh, I can't think of his first name now. Anders Zorn, Scandinavian artist. And he only used ochre, um, uh, ivory black, and something similar to cadmium red light. Uh, some artists will actually um, use cadmium red light instead of crimson or vermilion, I should say. It's not crimson, vermilion. And you wait till you see the, the masterful use of color, uh, through what most people would call blah colors. Wait till you see his paintings if you get a chance to Google them. Ander Zorn. But that'll be one of our classes coming up. Oh, oh nice, Nick. Wait, Nick, what see. did you paint on? Is that paper? Maybe like a board or something. It, oh, canvas paper. Mm. Uh, you have to get that one framed. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Actually, uh, what size is the paper? Usually they'll have a standard size. Six by eight? Oh. Yeah, that sounds good. Six by eight, sure, sure, Jeff. <laughs> if you get a chance. Oh, I cut it down. Okay. So eight by oh, 11, yeah. so four by 5.5? Or no, did you go the other way? <laughs> Is it, are you using oil or acrylic? Oh, five by seven, I was gonna cut it five to by five seven. by seven. Yeah, so five by seven is a standard size. Um, Represent. Lucas oil. Oh, Lucas oil. Nice. There you go. That's the good stuff right there.
I'll look around and I'll see if I have a five by seven canvas laying around. Jerry's out of Rama. They should <laughs> yeah. actually pay us for how much we promote them. <laughs> Telling you. So uh, we didn't get into it a whole lot. I was expecting to to do a little bit more of this, but destroying our, our painting first, making that mess. And we kind of did in the very beginning, but we still had a little bit of structure to it. So I was kind of disappointed that I didn't push myself a little bit more in there. But, uh, um, well, you can kind of see what's going on back here. You know, it's, it's uh, um, destroying your painting in order to, you know, kind of uh, move it forward. And it's that even this little idea of the pink that goes up into the sky, um, it's kind of like, a, um, trying to think of a, like heat coming off of maybe when you pull out, pull it out, pull it out of a, a, something hot out of the oven, you're on back to food. Um, you can see that heat rising. If you look close, you can kind of see how that heat comes off there. That's kind of what I'm getting um, with my flowers. Maybe it's the road when the, on a super hot day, you're looking down the, the highway and you can see that heat. I don't know what you would call it. I know there's a technical word for it, but that heat coming off the highway. So in a similar way, that's kind of what I went with. I shouldn't say I planned it, but I went with it once I saw it because I liked it. Happy accidents. There you go. Anyone else want to uh, show their painting? Show off a little bit? Oh, Sharon, yeah, beautiful. All right, one sec, keep it up. I, I love the softness of that. Oh, yes. Are you using watercolor? Oil? Acrylic? Oh, huh. I love how you blended that all together. It's like a watermelon. Yeah. It's totally a watermelon. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. All right, let's see here. Here's, wait, let's, we're going with Gary and Eileen first. Oh, wow. Look at that one too. Oh, sweet. I, okay, I'm going back to food. I'm seeing the sprinkles on donuts again. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> so, well, here we go. Beautiful, Eileen. Oh, oh nice. Awesome. Uh, Gary, um, so I'll be honest with you, I'm not feeling the cone flowers, but what I'm feeling is the lupine. That, like, I, like I'm, um, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with lupine or not. That's what a, a lot of the galleries have been um, requesting lately. That's cool. I love it. I love it. We'll set this up. Oh, yeah. Here's Kayla's. Oh, yeah. Uh, total fireworks or pasta. <laughs> oh, with, with uh, red sauce. Why? With red sauce. Don't do yeah. that to me, Jake. <laughs> I'm thinking food now. Kayla, fantastic. Again, um, I love the contrast in there. It really makes it striking. Here's another. Here's Whitney's. Oh, yeah. Whitney's. Look at, feel the depth in that. Frosting. It's a cake Yeah, but right there. seriously, look, look at, a, you are looking in past those front flowers and feeling it going in, into the shadows of that thick bush of flowers. Yeah. It almost is an optical illusion. 
Yeah. Again, um, everybody, I'm always blown away by everybody's paintings. They're all unique and um, uh, you, you can see because they're all unique and they're all good, uh, the endless variety, the endless possibilities that you can do with this. And again, the more you, the more you paint, if you use this little recipe, the simple recipe for creating paintings, the more you do it, the more adventure, adventures you're gonna go on with this, but the more confident you're gonna become and you're just gonna start having a lot of fun with painting because it's gonna, it, it's gonna become you, it's gonna become your style. Um, uh, make it your own, uh, get out of the box, get out of the, the, where you're comfortable and really push yourself. And you're gonna see great things on the outside of our comfort zone. And I think that's one of the, the coolest things with everybody's paintings tonight is the striking contrast. It's so easy to stay in, that, in the, those mid tones, but uh, everybody really pushed themselves out of that. And uh, look at just that, um, those contrasts that of light and dark even, uh, look at what it does for a painting. Here's, oh, thank here's you, Anna. One, Jeff. Thanks, okay. Anna. Here's another one Thank here. you for joining us. Oh, <gasps> look at that one. All right, so who, this isn't Joanna. What's your name? Jeff's gonna make me buy your painting. Yep. Justice, Justice. that is, that is beautiful. I love tell. the variety of pinks and shapes. Yeah. Very nice. You are an artist. Thank you, Gary and Eileen. Thanks for joining. Yeah, isn't it? How many of you um, looked at everybody else's painting and thought, man, I wish my painting turned out that way. And we're afraid to show our paintings because we think we can't do what other people are doing. And that is one of the things that held me back until I was almost in my thirties of ever showing my paintings to anyone. I, I, I didn't feel like I could paint like everybody else, so I wasn't an artist. But how many, um, we're all thinking, okay, I like, I like how they did it. I don't like mine. But I know people were looking back at yours and saying, I wish I would have painted mine like that one. It's just our, our human nature. Um, uh, fight that tendency. Because uh, this, we just use a you know, simple little recipe for making a painting. Um, and that's keep, keep recycling this recipe. And uh, you, will have, you will always have a, a great painting. Um, make sure you go back if you forgot some things, check out you, or the YouTube video. Uh, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> uh, I don't know where I was going with it. I think I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I think I think we're we're all getting hungry, Jeff. Wait, I want to see how mine tastes. <laughs> uh oh. First, you taste the paint, oh. then you cut off the ear. I think that's the progression. Exactly. <laughs> yep, that's what Van uh, Van Gogh did. Make sure you remember to <laughs> sign your painting. Yes.
Oh, got an interesting question. What does your signature mean? It goes back to the ancient Egyptians and um, the hieroglyphics and uh, the scholars of the Egyptians um, created this alphabet and, okay, I'm lying. Truth is back in the eighties, I was in seventh grade and I had another creative friend and we were trying to cre uh, write our names in a, in a creative way. And I was so jealous of him because his last name was Katie, C-A-D-Y. Well, guess what he did? He just wrote the letter K and the letter D. And he, I think he stylized it a little bit. And I was just like, oh, man, there's nothing I can do with my name. Well, I kept playing around with it. And eventually I came up with that signature. And so I, I used it um, in seventh grade for fun. But when I started painting full time, I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go back to seventh grade and use that signature. And so that's, that's how it came about. And uh, if you look back in the um, archives of the 80s, you'll actually see a lot of, I didn't even know, remember this, but now when I watch uh, uh, old movies or old videos from the 80s, I'll see that style of writing quite a bit. Oh, that's funny. Now you know. Now you know. And now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> so, um, like with my painting, uh, I didn't get a whole lot of time to become one with the painting or get really in tune with the painting. So now um, I'll actually kind of sit back a little bit and let the, the painting um, speak to me. So if I notice that there's um, irritations in the painting, I'll make adjustments and uh, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll even have to, I'll destroy an area of a painting to make it to, um, where it's more pleasing to my eye. And the best way to do that is standing back um, six to eight feet. Stand back from your painting six to eight feet. That's the same distance you'd be looking at a piece of art in a gallery or a museum. And that's where the artist who painted the painting in the um, gallery or museum. So they would stand back, observe the painting, walk um, towards the painting, apply paint, and then stand back again and not make any adjustments um, uh, until they observed it the second time. And they'll paint the whole painting from that six to eight feet away. They may apply painting up close, but they're painting the painting at that distance. And it allows us to see the painting as a whole rather than um, uh, just, you know, all these parts when we're up close. So if we stand back, now we can kind of take it all in. We get to see the sky, the flowers, the distance in there. Um, we get to see what irritates our eye, what, what works, what doesn't work. And uh, then of course, make adjustments so that it does work. Try it sometime. Uh, paint your painting from stand up. Um, you get great exercise. You'll wear out your shoes. Um, you wear out the carpet, but uh, it does make a huge difference. And it's so much easier to have that conversation with your painting. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. I just noticed something. We didn't have one glitch through the whole class with the internet. What? And I'm telling you. Something's not go right. <laughs> I think we're on to something here. I think we're on to something. Thanks for joining, Nick and Caitlin. Always enjoy yeah, having you guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah. See you guys next week for the, uh, what is it? It's the hair. Bunny rabbit. <laughs> so we are going to do a hair. 
compared to a rabbit, like a, we think of the cottontails around here. So the hare is more the rabbit you're going to see out west. They have huge ears. They have real definite um, facial structures, and they're just a lot of fun to paint. Bugs Bunny. There you go, Bugs Bunny. All right, if uh, any last questions? Comments? Uh, questions, Anybody comments. want to make fun of Jake? <laughs> I was just going to say the same thing about you, Jeff. <laughs> this is the old West here, Jake. You got to be quicker on the draw. Uh, <laughs> that was too slow, too slow. All right. Oh, thank team. you, Barb. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's all Jake. Barb. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you for joining us. If you say so, Jeff. <laughs> Jake <Jake's laughs> makes me rehearse all these jokes. <laughs> hey, Jeff, we didn't practice that line. No going off well, script. Well, you were supposed to be the first one to go, but I was just too quick on the draw. <laughs> Great seeing you again, Barb. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Whitney. All right. If, joining. if there's no other comments or questions, we are going to see you say goodbye and see you guys next week. Yes. See everyone next week. Thanks for joining. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>